So my, my name is Pek Kavares, and I have, uh, we put together a little uh, benchmarking on the PCI PTM feature with a couple of my colleagues, uh, Ashwani and uh, Timothy. Timothy is actually, actually here. And then uh, we also had Dominic Roth from a company in Germany, I IBV. I think he's been somewhat active in the TAP community. I think TI hasn't been that active, but uh, let's see if that uh, cha changes a little bit. Okay, so yeah, uh, and and the one thing I noticed, by the way, I, that this OCP there, I'm, I'm coming from the embedded world, so like 100 megabit Ethernet and gigabit Ethernet is kind of where we stop. So it's kind of fun to see these 200 gig 30s and stuff, but uh, but interestingly, the latencies haven't really improved that much. So I, I mean, we can do with 100 megabit Ethernet and some cut through switching, kind of similar latencies, which is kind of interesting. But yeah, uh, <clears throat> okay, so the motivation for this was kind of, I, I guess I'm kind of coming on bo bottoms up and uh, it was um, some folks, Julian and, and may maybe some others, uh, had noticed our, our part and I, I heard, uh, that's how I kind of heard about the project. But then, then if I looked at the, um, the, the, the card that had been put out there in the open source, it had like a, a reasonably small, but, but still like a $100 ballpark uh, FPGA. And uh, then I was thinking like, okay, kind of the functionality is somewhat similar to what we can do with, uh, with a microcontroller or a, or a low-end processor at about 10 bucks. So these are like ballpark numbers, but, but uh, uh, so it's like, okay, so that's, that's interesting. That's, that, okay, C could we use this kind of a, as a, do the same thing, but just more efficiently? And then, then I looked at the, some, of, some of the other details and, and, and then I think some of the clock synchronization stuff related to creating sync signals out and, and latching sync signals coming in reminded me of some of the things on like Ethercat and some of the other uh, in, industrial networking, uh, <coughs> industrial ne networking protoc protocols and kind of the infrastructure put on the chip to, uh, to use these features. Oh yeah, and of course the, the PCIe PTM as a feature, uh, uh, I was kind of pushing for us to include it in all the way at the very lowest end part. So it's kind of fun to see someone actually use it. So, okay, so just one, one kind of like, okay, what, what's the part that I'm talking about? So we have a, f uh, a family of, a, of about, let's say from like $7 to 15 bucks. So one of the value propositions, it's deep embedded price has to be considered. It's not the highest performing processor, but yes, it has PCI Express, PTM, and then there's variations of it that can run Linux. So then you got these ARM Cortex A53 cores, or you just hot run it as a high-end MCU and any mix in between. Um, yeah, and, and we, we have uh, up, to, up to six Ethernet ports and, uh, and a PCI Express uh, Gen 2 one lane. So not exactly the high, highest end, but, but it does have uh, PCIe PTM. And we, we can run these devices as both uh, PCIe root complex or endpoint. And actually, the, when I get to it, I'll, that's, that's what I'm doing is I'm, I'm going to run PCIe PTM with a microcontroller on one side and a processor on the other side, which are both, both our devices. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. And, and where this gets used, just to kind of frame it a little bit, is like, some of these uh, industrial control networks, like uh, you see EtherCAD is typically used like in a robot arm. So each of the axes is perhaps a microcontroller. And then there's a motion controller sitting at the base. And the communication over them is EtherCAD, which is essentially like a hacked up Ethernet using some of the low level standard features, but then hacking uh, preambles and other stuff. Uh, so so doing, a, doing a network interface card for EtherCAT could be one, one use case for, for this part. So, so just, okay, so un unfortunately, it didn't, uh, we didn't have a, managed to, uh, to build a, a, a pretty card for this case. So we had two, two of these evaluation boards. One of them is, uh, is, is, uh, is an endpoint, and, and one of them is, is root complex, and, and uh, we had to just use this cabling. So not, not a pretty edge connector, but hopefully we'll have that at some point. Okay, let me just hit this, yeah. Okay, so first thing is, let's see if PTM just works. So 
Yes, so this is kind of a debug review of turning PTM on. And by the way, just for transparency, we are using Cadence, uh, Cadence PCIe IP, uh, which you can see if you guys just go into the Linux device trees, you'll, you'll find it, so not, not, not a big secret. Uh, but okay, so now, good thing, we got, we got the PCIe PTM working, bunch of timestamps are showing up, something's going on, so what do we do with it? And this is where I always kind of remember the, um, uh, I don't know, a decade back or something, I, I remember seeing uh, Kevin Stanton's presentation on, on like software and, and, and time synchronization and right, the, usually it's, you just don't wanna know what, what time is now, you wanna trigger something like a pulse per second type signal. So I don't, I'm not saying gonna go in, but this is kind of the timing infrastructure, like hardware, you have the counters, you can, create sync signals at different, uh, different rates and, and you can la latch uh, counter values from other peripherals. So yes, so that, that's, that's what this is trying to show. So we have the PCI PTM, we have e Ethernet interfaces have counters, the processor cores have counters and I can, I can create the tuple, tuples out of them and also use them to create what I think Intel uses the term uh, T, T GPIO or timed GPIO. Uh, we, we don't we don't use that term, but, but yeah, you can like trigger a GPIO at this point of time. Uh, okay, so there's a sure you can do the same thing with an FPGA, but this kind of infrastructure is meant for that same purpose. So okay, so what I did is then we we ran PTM, uh, and I have two two di <laughs> two pictures and then a table. So we ran PTM with. Uh, uh, Actually, did I have the, yeah, P PTM with the ref clock connected and ref clock uh, not connected on the PCIe cable. And, and then I'll, I'll go kind of show what kind of accuracies we got to. Uh, yeah, so the first one, the first picture is okay. The one pulse per second looks pretty nice on the left. So zoomed in a little bit there. So yes, look, looks, looks pretty nice. Uh, there's one pulse per second coming from the root complex. The, the red one and the yellow one is, is, is coming from the endpoint. Okay, so looks, looks, looks pretty nice. There's just a kind of a uh, fixed, fixed delay. Then on the, when the ref clock is, is not connected, so see this kind of a drift, drift going on. Uh, and and then, then, I, then we varied some of the PTM parameters to, to see, see what, what kind of, and I, then I basically put that in a table. So, so the pictures to show that yes, we did actually measure something. So then we ran this, this kind of test. Uh, we didn't run them for like in some uh, fancy environment. We just ran an office environment for one hour. And if I try to, it, it's the same PTM request intervals on both sides. But the way, uh, way the, the configuration is there's a, there's an, uh, request interval, and then you can have it up to times uh, times nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, nine. Uh, so I, I captured te intervals from ten milliseconds to nine seconds, and and what's the observed jitter with the pulse per second setup? So not exactly picoseconds, but but if the ref clock uh, signal is is connected between the, the, the in in the PCIe bus, I, I we get to like couple couple nanoseconds of, of jitter with the very sparse interval and, and with the tighter interval it goes closer to one. And then what we saw that if the reference clock is not connected it kind of goes out of control and, and I think this is where we would be needing some sort of a software, uh, t t c capturing some, some more of the uh, timestamps and, uh, and, and, and kind of a PTP uh, stack style to, to improve that number. But this is, this is where, where we are. Uh, okay, Th then the, the other angle here was, uh, was uh, okay, we got PCIe PTM working, we're creating a pulse per second. What if we, instead of a pulse per second, let's, let's try to create a little more frequent, uh, frequent pulses because, uh, I mean, that, that could be, could be used at the, at the board level to, to create a better solution. So we got 100, mega, 100 hertz pulse per second works. Uh, sorry, no, a, a kilohertz work, pulse per second works. 10 megahertz works. Uh, 
then okay, 83. That's that's where it kind of fell apart. So so in this this part at, at up to a, up to 10 megahertz pulse, 10 megahertz pulse uh, seems to be seems to be fine. But by the way, the the zooming is not the same, of course, on the on the screenshots. So so yeah, 83 megahertz is where we managed to break it, break it. Uh, which is kind of in the ballpark of expected that somewhere in the 50 megahertz is where our uh, GPIO stuff has some limits. Okay, what what hardware has this feature? Uh, so I, I put a few. So the 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 ha the hand there is holding that BeagleBone YAI. It's kind of a I don't know if some of you are from the BeagleBone community, with Jason Kreitner is kind of paired with our uh, our low end processors. And their latest one is this BeagleBone A, Beagle, BeagleBone Y AI. Uh, it, it unfortunately doesn't have like a nice PCI edge connector, so so that's why we use the, the evaluation boards that are pictured on the right. But they have a the same silicon IP, slightly lower end spin actually on the and and including the the, the microcontroller. Uh, yeah, and there, there's several other uh, so modules of which I put pictures on the. Pictures there as well. Uh, yeah, so kind of recapping the yeah the problem. I was looking at that. Hey, c could we do what what uh, at an order of magnitude cheaper solution to to achieve the same as as, as done with an F FPGA with either like a bare metal MCU or or Linux if you want to run it run it there. Um, the yeah, the, the, the finding from there was that, that I, I think like s some additional software, GPTP stack-like, uh, is, 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 uh, is probably something we need to, need to look at to, to get the, the accuracy better, accuracy improved. And, uh, and yeah, it looks like the PCIe, Linux PCIe PTM driver stuff is not really like super sorted out. Uh, so. That would be great if, if that got a little more, little more attention. And uh, yeah, we'll have the, the this example that we were running will be like publicly available in a month or so. And then I, there's a few few part numbers that have that uh, hardware capability in it. All right, I think that's that's it for me. Thank you. Yeah, questions, go ahead. Hey, thanks. Great presentation, uh, Kevin. Uh, on, when you were showing those two tables, yes. one was with common clock, the other one yep. was with uh, separate clocks. Yes. Did I understand that like the bottom one, you're running a PTM request every nine seconds? Yes, we were exploring like the edges of the IP, uh, yeah. So from this, you could compute the PPM difference between the clocks, for example, and on the left, the PPM difference is zero, so you would have a nice mm -hmm. stable common clock. Would, Okay. Uh, a follow-up was would sp was was either of these clocks spread the spectrum? Uh, no. Okay. We we did yeah we we did run sp spread spectrum, but I didn't have it in the material. We'll probably have it in the actual software release because we we ran into some um, issues, and that that's where it was coming. My my comment on the uh, that that the we probably need like a GPTP like. Uh, stack software help, yeah. software help with the spread, spread, spread sorry SSC SSC yeah yeah no sorry not a native English speaker and that's a tough one for me so yeah okay. yeah so this was just to explore like the edges of the yeah thanks yeah I have one fast one did sure. you did you uh, run PTM with your chip against any other chips like yeah yes we we did we did run with the uh, Intel um, because uh, we have uh, Intel i two two six NIC card. Okay, cool. Uh, the I I didn't include the the results there because of the um, uh, we we had some issues with the how how long it ran and there might be a bug on one or the other side. Okay, <laughs> thanks a lot. Right. It is and there is a problem with the Intel driver on the IGC that it first checks if the host is an Intel product. Then it checks if it has PTM, which really needs Maybe to get I'll solved. Maybe I'll talk to them. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right.
The IGC.C literally checks that first. Uh, is Intel, it's, is 86 Intel before it even checks PTM capability? Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah, probably we ran into, I think we ran into some other issue at like two hours or something, which we're trying to figure out, but yeah. All right, yeah. thank you very much. All right, thank you.